Hello, my wife, wife, fam, and friends. This is Ms. Sophia, author of Wealthy Wife, <laughs> Meeting, Dating, and Marriage Man, as well as the founder of the Wealth of Academy, and of course, your godmother of affluent, rich, and wealthy romance. How are you doing, Wealthy Wife, fam, and friends? All right, I'm going to start out by saying thank you. Thank you, thank you for joining me. Once again, I appreciate you. I truly, truly do. I appreciate you going to spend some time with me, you know, be part of this process of shared wisdom, once again, ideologies, opinions periodically. I do love my periodic rants. I have to laugh. I'm not going to lie. Not, not even going to lie because there are days I'm just like, ah. Because today's topic is not so much a rant, but it's something that is so important because it would alleviate so much tension, and stress, worry, anxiety, and depression in people's lives. Yes, the topic today is how to become unbothered. How to become unbothered. How to be unbothered. That is today's topic. So, once again, thank you for joining me. For my old school OG subscribers, once again, you know I adore you and I appreciate you. Thank you for being with me for all the years that you've been with me. For those of you that are new or newer subscribers to my YouTube channel, I want to say first, welcome to the World of Wealthy Wife, and thank you. I hope that you also become one of my long-term subscribers and, you know, go through the videos that are posted. I think I'm, I don't know, I'm over a hundred, as I said before, those that are newer, I have, I took down like 350 of my videos and audios. They're still sitting in archives. Some of them may come back, some of them may never come back. I'll be honest. I just have no desire to go through all of them right now. Uh, in due time, I shall, and we'll see which ones I may repost onto the uh, channel. But in the meantime, there's new content coming out, obviously. There are some playlists I have set up, so take a look at the playlist. Definitely go through some of the titles and see which ones actually resonate with you. There is a ton of information that I do share. And if you are newer, I will share this with you. I've said, I think, in a other, maybe a couple audios ago videos ago that I tend to speak more in a conversation as a conversation as opposed to giving you this whole checklist of A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There are a ton of people offering you guys checklists, all the how to's, do's, don'ts, whatever. No. My entire reason for being here is to assist you to learn how to become you. Your personal best, emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually. I'll say this again, as I mentioned in the, uh, the audio I posted the other day, yesterday, well, the day one before this one. Money is us. Currency, finance, riches, wealth is feminine energy. It's us. So when you are really learning how to be present emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, in healing yourself, learning yourself, you will be so amazed how your life transforms. And the things that you stop worrying about, the things that just simply become unimportant to you because you're living your truth, you're enjoying your life, and the things that are meant to come to you and assist you are going to arrive. They have to arrive. But you, you must understand how to speak this truth into your world. I was listening to, um, listening to a video last night. And I said before, I, I, I listen to a variety of topics. I'm somebody who is very open to receiving information and knowledge. And I love to hear people speaking in terms that really tap into the, the, you know, the higher forms of spiritual wisdom. Because it's out there. It's available. You must be open-minded to receive it. Because so many of the things that are being shared tend to go against so many of these religious doctrines. Because most religious doctrines, as I've mentioned through various YouTube videos and audios, are meant to basically imprison you. They're not there to assist you, for you to really grow. You'll get to a certain point sometimes, but if you cease to do your own studying, you're going to get stuck. I'm saying nothing which is untrue. Once again, if you're not studying for yourself, learning for yourself, questioning things, then you're going to get stuck and stay trapped in that golden cage, so to speak. We're not into golden cages over here. I don't care how pretty it is. I don't care how glorious, how luxury. No, because we can have all those things without being imprisoned by other people's ideologies and expectations. We can appreciate and honor other people and be courteous to other people. But we need not be stuck in their systems, in their ideologies, and in, in their... their ugh. So I can't even think of... Oh, I don't even have a word for it right now. But you are imprisoned. My goal is to release you. If... You're ready to be released because once again, it's not my job to free you. I am here to offer the tools. I'm here to offer the assistance. I'm here to offer the safe space 
for you to unfold and learn you. And that's part of the process of becoming unbothered. Now, for those of you who have actually signed up for the new master classes coming out, I said I've been mentioning it the past couple of times I've done my YouTube videos. I have a brand new live master class coming up. And it is called literally the Muse, Becoming a 21st Century Sex Goddess. I love that title. Yes, I do. I, I just love saying the word sex goddess because once again, the word will make some people, women cringe because once again, they have no idea what their power is because once they've been doing such a great job of disempowering us. Well, I understand how powerful we are and I refuse. I'm not in that space. So once again, I understand who I am. I understand and still growing and still learning, obviously, because I love this process. But for the women that are actually ready to be free, of this and to have a safe space to learn self, this is what I'm here for because with it comes the riches and the wealth. And you learn how to, once again, be at ease in the process because most of us, if not even, I could, I'd probably say 85, 90% of the people struggle with money. Even if they have tons and tons of money. Now I'm talking about the mindset because we're once again taught that everything is hard and it's difficult. And if you desire these things, you're a bad person and, you know, or you're an evil person because, you know, you desire to live a grander life, a more prosperous life. No, no, because I'll say this once more because I was listening once again to this video I was listening to last night and the gentleman was speaking and I, and I, and I love when I run across people that actually do get into the Bible because I said before, my background is, is Christian. That's my family's background. And God, they've gone so far off to the to to whatever direction they've gone into because people are still expecting that they have to be poor, not want much, or not be asking too much. I don't want to ask too much because you know it might not be mine to have. Are you are you nuts? In that book, there is so much in reference to being prosperous, and it's telling you through and through the book to learn yourself, learn how to speak to divinity. It is here to serve you. It is here to assist you. This is why I'm talking about the goddess energy, because once again, the feminine energy is wide awake. People are like, oh, she's reawakening. No, she's wide awake. She's very much here. It's now she's finally decided to step forward and be and be present again. And this is once again why I'm doing this class because talking about the sex goddess, sex goddess is the goddess of fertility. She's a goddess of love, fertility, expansion, growth, uh, powerful energy in reference to elevation, also very powerful energy in reference to destruction. Because sometimes we have to take everything to ash, I mean, literally burn it to the ground, figuratively, Fig figuratively. Sometimes it can be actually, but we're doing figuratively. So we're talking about you emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, learning how to literally bring to ash the things which no longer serve you have kept you trapped in a system that once again is there to steal your energy and to steal from you. Learning how to own your energy, learning how to speak your truth. And I love it because somebody actually uh, commented on, was it that particular video? I don't know. But I remember she commented on the fact that she wishes more people be honest about that journey back to self. It is messy. It really, it really is because you have to unlearn and untangle yourself from so many things and be willing to let things and people and just stuff go. Once you begin to understand that, literally you have been, you've been in a trap, essentially. You've been inside that golden cage. So as you release yourself, yes, there is definitely empty space because this is a space that's being created for you to call to you what now is your truth. And I know some of you are thinking, Miss Sophia, I can't tell you what your truth is. I have people say that, well, just give me instructions. I'm offering you instructions, but you have to do the work. So some people get frustrated. Some people get annoyed because maybe I'm not giving them, well, if you do A, B, C, D, then these things will happen for you and you'll have these results. No, because the world has offered you A, B, C, D. Well, think about this. Let's go over the, over the middle class path to the mundane. High school, get good grades, get good grades, get good grades, get good grades, get those grades, get those grades, go to college, get out of high school. Hopefully you've got it, you know, you've got good grades, you may get a scholarship or if you don't get a scholarship, take out those loans and those grants and whatever. Not knocking college. I spent four years in college, okay? It has its place in our world. It does. 
Because once again, you do need people to have skill sets to do certain jobs. And sometimes college is the way to make that happen. So you get out and then you can go to college, you know, get that degree. Once you graduate your, your, your degree, get a job. Oh. Okay. Okay, now now you've got your job and you may have met your person that you're going to marry in college, or maybe not. Uh, then eventually you get married and have a family and buy a house and have a mortgage and buy a car and all these things that you're and go to church every Sunday, whatever they're telling you to do. That is just basically, it, then you get into it because you think you're doing the right thing because you're doing as you're told. And they, once again, painted this beautiful picture for you, which is always amazing to me because when you look at the picture and you're finally honest with yourself, you look at the people who are telling you to do these things and you see their misery. They're stuck. They're unhappy because they're not living their truth. But once again, they think they did right by us to tell us to do the same thing because that's the path they chose. And while they're maybe not totally miserable and it's not totally awful, it's, well, you know, it could be worse. Never say that, by the way. Never let those words leave your lips. It could be worse because life is guaranteed to show you, oh, really? Oh, actually, it can be. Once again, your words, you must be conscious of what you're saying. This is so important. But I'm just saying, so when you've been doing as you're told, and you one day wake up and you look around, you're going, oh, this sucks. Because now you're in that same, same circle of misery with everybody else. And you're thinking, I've said this, my goddaughters, women I work with, have come. Because women who work with me are the ones who are ready to be free of the system, so to speak. Free to be who they're dreaming about. Free to become their truth. And I keep going back to the word truth because you're here for a reason. There are things that you're meant to do. Some people on a very, very grand scale, some people it might be just day-to-day -day things, but you're still very, very important. Because once again, we all have, we're part of, we're part of a collective, so to speak. We're part of a, of a global community, whether you realize it or not. You are important and you truly do matter. And we would prefer that you be happy and enjoying yourself and really learning and growing and expanding and evolving into this just beautiful, dynamic, happy, joy-filled, prospering, thriving woman who owns her energy. I said before, all this stuff about the femininity, me, 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 and most of it is nothing. It's nothing. It is superficial. It's teaching you nothing that's going to be lasting. Because I still keep seeing the same questions coming up. I still, I'm, I'm, matter of fact, I'm looking at all these topics. I'm, I'm, I've pulled up my little mini iPad here. The topics in, in reference to, you know, men and dating and this and that. Uh, worrying about how to get money from a man. Learning how to be the priority in his life. Um, never, you know, never a man's or nor a man's energies. If he, if he does, a man does these seven things. Do not date him. These are YouTube titles. Um, what else? When an emotionally broken man is using a woman, he'll show these signs. He's not interested. He's not interested. If he's not interested, do this. I... <sighs> you want to know how to become unbothered over this topic? Is you learn you. Because so many of these things, they keep you guys in a loop, just so you know. They keep you in a loop because when I'm looking at these topics, he's not interested in you. If he's not interested in you, do this. Or where is the other one? If a man does these seven things, do not date him. You guys are going out here preparing to have a problem while you're dating. You're coming, you're going out there prepared to have issues in your relationships. Why? 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 Because you're told it's a problem. That's why. You're listening to, you're buying into people that haven't always discussing, oh, it's hard out there. It's, it's so difficult. You know, men, you know, don't, they don't like women and men are like women, don't like men and all this arguing back and forth about nothing. And I'm saying it's nothing because it would be nothing if people would just simply focus on themselves. Learn who you are. Learn what you desire. Let go what no longer serves you. And people are like going, that's hard. No, it's not. It need not be, because here's the kicker. Once you make the decision for that to be true, once again, why I'm doing this masterclass, it's a live masterclass, six weeks. It's six Saturdays in a row. Starts this coming Saturday, October 14th, which once again, is, I'm so happy, it literally is a new moon and a solar eclipse. How powerful, how powerful of a way to start 
a new beginning and to begin to gain clarity about himself. Oh my gosh, I love, I love the universe, by the way. She is so awesome. But so many of the things that you guys struggle with wouldn't be struggles. I'm not saying it's like the, the, the path is neat and clean to get out of it. Of course not, because once again, you've got to dig yourself out the mud, so to speak, because once again, so many layers of gunk has been poured on you because you've been listening. You've been you're, you've been the good girl. You're being the good girl. You know, you're following the the, the, the the guidance of people that once again, some of them truly do love you. They think what they're sharing with you is assisting you. But if it hasn't helped them become better and happier, how is it going to help you? You guys know it's not because... Wow, these video titles are out here. Oh my gosh. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this. I'm just going, just going through this. And I'm just like, wow. But these titles are popular. Because once again, and when he ignores you, do this. If he ignores you, leave the fuck alone. Yeah, I said it just the way I said it. Because seriously, if a man's ignoring you, do you really desire him? You know, you understand that they're taught how to do the things they do. They have these all these men out there that, once again, as women have people who teach them to do various things, you know, like basically how to, you know, get men for money and do minimal effort and just just whole stealing from each other. Men are taught also how to treat you like garbage. They're, they're called pickup artists. I've, I told you, I've said before, I go through and listen to some of the things around here. I listen to men share information. And when I see stuff like that, because I discuss playing chess, not checkers. When I see things like, you know, when he ignores you, do this, honey, that's checkers. That's checkers. That is such a, that is so basic, childish stuff. Because if a man is ignoring you, why do you need him in your life? If he needs to ignore you, like, cool. You know what? Because there are so many men out there. You guys have this whole smorgasbord in front of you. You have this whole buffet of, of life in front of you. And they're worrying about a man who ignores them. Oh, now he's become a challenge. Why? Now you're going to feed all this energy into him, boost his ego. Because a lot of the things that are happening when I see these kind of things, it is ego. Someone has now taken it personal. Their ego has got involved. And ego is a part of our life. Ego is not a bad thing. It's just how we utilize it. Because once again, it's one of the things that motivates us to do things. So it need not be a terrible thing, but how you use it. You should be utilizing your ego, not the ego driving you. There is a difference. So when, when I see these topics, I'm just like, oh, God, here's another one. These things trigger a real man. Let me see. These things trigger a real man's want for you. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> I'll say this once more. Making things difficult when they need not be. Seriously. And hear me. I'm not saying I'm above everything all the time. I've obviously learned my process through life. But when it comes to men, and I'll say this again, I got a PhD, D, 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 when it comes to men. And yes, have I run across men in my life? Like I said, that, you know, may have triggered some, some weirdness in me in reference to, you know, oh, really desire this person. Yes, that was years and years ago. And even I had to catch myself going, wait a minute. Nah. You know, I cried over a man. Yes, I've done it. I've had one that I cried over. Absolutely. And when I got done doing it, I was like, you know what? This is ridiculous. What am I doing? Because when you begin to really just sit down and assess the entire situation, you're thinking, this person is bringing me nothing but aggravation, headaches, uh, this, this, that feeling in the pit of your stomach. It's like, ugh. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm good. I'm good. Wish him well. And I still do to this day. I still wish him well. I really, really hope he's doing great. Because here's my thing. Why am I allowing, why am I going to give someone that kind of power over me? And you also have to learn the difference because you're also being taught for some, by some women how to be, play hard to get. Why? 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 All these games that people play, and all this wasted energy that you could literally could be pouring into yourself, learning yourself, understanding how to become the attractive, the magnet that draws to you things that are really actually great for you. 
learning how to be patient because sometimes you have to be patient. I said when I was watching that video that my friend and my sister sent me and there's all these women, I like I said, I think it was in Nigeria. They're in this in their some probably some church someplace, all dressed in wedding dresses and they're all like they're praying and they're shouting and they're oh, all the tears and oh, all this stuff because they want to be a wife so desperately. So your desperation causes you to make poor decisions in your life. Because when those things are happening, that means there's outside pressure that's causing it. Because I said before, I'm all for marriage. Whatever you choose to do that truly brings you joy, I'm all about it. Whether you desire to become the wife someday, or if you are a wife and you're working your way through the details of it, I'm all for it. Because I do believe in long-term relationships. Or, I guess if you're eclectic like me, because I'm definitely eclectic, the cortisol energy is my energy. That's That goddess energy is my energy. So I'm somebody, and I've had men tell me this over the years, they're not able to, and, they, and I've heard men say that because I become a challenge for them because they can't tame me. I'm like, what? I go, what? I've heard, men have actually said this to me, I want to tame you. I go, do I look like some wild animal? I go, what are you talking about? Oh, I just, I just want to tame you. There's no taming me, darling. There's no taming me. I've had men try to put me in a cage, that, that, that gilded cage, so to speak. They've tried. Very frustrating process for them because like going, well, you just I go, oh, you know what? You 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 love me, you you here with me, you you desire me because I'm me. And as soon as I be and if I were to start changing and adapting, because once again it's a learning curve, changing and adapting and shrinking myself to be what you think I need to be for to, to be to, you know, for you to be happy, then I lose my magic, so to speak. And then once that happens, it becomes a problem for both of us. As I said before, I'm speaking from experience because, like I said, these are not things I've done often. But you know what? It's a learning curve. I experimented when I was younger. And you referenced it, you know, personality and learning and, and learning myself and how to hold on to my power, so to speak, and be authentic. And, you know, tried. And I realized, you know, either you have the energy large enough to be with me or you don't. I'm good with it. I'm good with it. Because shrinking myself to fit into somebody else's box that wasn't created for me is outrageously dumb. My words in reference to how I feel about it, okay? I'm not saying to any of you. I'm not no way calling saying that about in reference to anybody else. But that's how I felt in my mind in reference to me. It's like one of the dumbest things I could do because once again, I had done it. I'm like, oh, that was truly just disastrous to put it mildly. So I've learned. Know thyself. So for me, once again, it is a cortisol energy. It is definitely that energy of that woman who is that independent woman. Now, when I say independent, meaning I still enjoy having others in my world. I love men. You know this. I love men. I mean, I love men. Men are just, oh my gosh, they're mm, yummy. But I love their presence in my life, not to the point that I need to sacrifice and give my, you know, lay myself out there to become his victim. No, not at all. So I am that independent woman. And when I have the masculine in my world, when I'm when I am dating or in long-term relationships, and I have learned how to have to pay attention to them, watch how they're reacting, how the interaction interactions are happening, because I they blow a fuse. I'm like, oh crap, you weren't ready. Okay, cool, not a problem. Not a problem. And I've had and I'm laughing because now I'm, I'm I have gentlemen I've dated. Now they're starting to show up again. I'm like, where is this coming from? Is it? I thought Mercury Venus is out of retrograde, right? Oh wait a minute, but we're also in Libra season. Oh, that probably explains it. Huh. But yeah, I'm having, they're, you know, starting to resurface. Some of them are resurfacing. I'm like, hmm, that's different. Hey, I'm like, hey, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Thinking about you. Oh, that's awesome. I, I appreciate, I do appreciate it. Because I said before, some of the men I've dated over the years, we're still, we are still friends. I'm not romantically involved anymore. Been there, done that, but you know, but this re friendships have remained because I'm not somebody who, unless it's somebody that I just honest and truly know that I need to cut free and cut loose and just cut all ties from. Some of the men we just want to be in, just we had great friendships. It's just the romantic side, just we weren't compatible. But why blow, why get rid of a great friendship? So I don't. But I'm, but it's happening. I'm like, going, oh, this is different. 
I'm not one who tends to go backwards, just so you know. Been there, done that. Mm -hmm. Unless somebody has truly changed and he's become a different version of himself, he's grown into something, whatever, um, there's no going backwards. I mean, it would have to be like, the, I, I know what I know what I require in a man. I know the energy that has to be with me. Because once again, I am a larger than life presence. Always have been and has just become even more so as I have become a more, I love the word mature, a more mature individual, darling. Yes, hello. But that maturity, like I said, has come from gaining the wisdom of my life and choosing me in the process. Once again, I appreciate other people. I do. I appreciate this world. I love this world. Even though all the chaos and cray cray, because once again, she's going through growing pains right now, as we all are. So my goal is always that you guys, once again, learn who you are. Learn how to walk away from other people telling you what you should and shouldn't be. I still laugh when they say those do list, don't do list. I'm like, oh God, sit down. I, I and I say it the way I say it because sometimes it's it because it causes headaches for women. And I understand that when you're we are learning yourself and finally ready to search for yourself, you're going to like I said, it's a process. It's almost like like when you're losing weight, because weight loss is I think the best the best example I can give of just chaos and bedlam, because there are so many ideologies out there, so many things you could be doing, so many people that are so adamant, I mean, foaming at the mouth, rapid foaming at the um, rabid phony like rabies rabid phony foaming at the mouth that this is the way to do it if you don't do it this way you know you're garbage you're trash you're this you're that weight loss industry just so you know which is once again i was in the industry for 10 years i am certified and trained on so many different programs in that industry and i've learned there's no one size fits all you have to learn yourself but how to learn your body and learn what you need we're using weight loss as an example you're going to do some trial and error and in that trial and error, you must learn how to not allow to be unfazed, excuse me, here it is, unfazed, but other people's criticisms, other people's self-righteousness, because there are a ton of self-righteous people out there. You have to understand how to look at people and say, you know what, I'm happy that this worked for you. Not working for me. I won't tell you, not working for me. When I tried this, and I you know, gave it a try, and I was miserable. I was laughing. I ran across something on my, was my other YouTube page, Instagram page. And there's some young lady, she's like probably 20 something. And her big thing now, she was telling people that, you know, she, she now eats like a big breakfast to the point where she's over, she eats too much in the morning when she gets out of bed now, but she's learned that this really works. And you know, she's been, it, it, it whatever she, that's her, it's her thing right now. And it was so funny because there's people, because people think these people on Facebook, social media and think these folks are experts and like i'm like they're not she's not an expert in weight loss she is sharing she and that's what i said before i wish people would say based upon my experience not saying that all of you need to do this i wish people would actually say this but some of them don't and people who are literally searching for something trying to grasp onto something to, to at least give them some kind of foothold will take someone's information and their words as gospel as oh i should be doing this try it if it works for you great but if it doesn't don't feel bad because then you go through the comments and you see people talking about when i do this so it makes me sick and i feel and they're feeling bad they feel guilty that they're unable to do what this little girl and she's a little girl she's only in her 20s and no insult to you 20 somethings please please zero in, in insult meant there but i'm just saying in reference to life experience because she's still and you know there's different hormones that happen in your body every decade our bodies change so what she's experienced in her 20s She's still ideally in a healthier space because her body hasn't spent as many years going through the changes. So that is a youngster in, in some ways. So once again, no insult meant to there. So what she's doing at 20 something, you're not gonna be able to do it 30 something, 40 something, 50 something, because your body's gonna be different. So I'm going through these comments and watching people and they're like, oh, some of them are literally upset. Like, I can't do that. And they're feeling guilty and you, you can hear it because they're saying it. And then finally, so I found the comment I was looking for. And somebody was like, you know what? Don't even worry about it. She goes, she, the, how they put it? This is one of many things she's been passionate about. She goes, don't worry about it. She'll be on to something different by next month. And it was the truth. 
And once again, they weren't throwing shade at this young lady because it was somebody's been following her and they they just they you know they they like her, but they're just saying to ease the mind of the people in the comments that were literally were losing it because they thought oh, if I ever do this, I eat a big breakfast, and I'm nauseous all day, or I throw up. I mean, they're just like it makes some people, some people are not meant to eat a heavy breakfast. You can break your fast and not have a ton of food on your stomach. You can. You must know your body. Once again, I've learned this from working in the weight loss industry, weight reduction, weight management for 10 years. I've studied in it. I've studied nutrition. I've studied this process. This is not something that I'm just, you know, I read a couple books and now I'm, I'm an expert. No, I literally was in the mud, in the dirt doing this. Worked with thousands of women and uh, some men as well. But I'm using that as an example because that's what happens too when you're learning, trying to figure out who you are as a woman. How are you going to exhibit this feminine energy, so to speak? You must, once again, take the time out to learn you. Because there's great information out there. Please never let, never take what I'm saying and think that I'm saying there's nothing good out there. There are some women that are sharing some amazing information. And I love their content. But I also see far too many of them because they're all the same. They're all talking about the same exact stuff. But talking about the same exact stuff gets them tons of likes. It gets them tons of views because most people are still stuck in preschool because they're too nervous to step outside the box. They're too nervous to understand that they may have outgrown something. So they'll stay. And I watch it because there's somebody I've been watching. I, I haven't watched her in years, but I haven't tapped in to when I'm not, I'm not giving names. I'm not giving names. But it's somebody that's been around for quite a while. I was laughing one day. She had some topic. I thought, you know, I haven't listened to her in years. Let me go and listen in. And I'm laughing because she's doing a live. It was from a live. It wasn't, she, wasn't doing, she was not live at that time. It was, the video was from a previous live she had done. And I'm laughing because people are asking her questions. Same questions. I'm sure she's heard a billion times over these past several years she's been doing what she's doing. And she and she and her and you can you can even hear the irritation in her voice. Because it's it's annoying. It literally is annoying when you, people keep asking you the same basic stuff over and over and over again. It's like have you done no work on self? Have you done nothing to to put the what's been offered to you into use into practice? And you, you know the answer is no because they're asking the same question over and over and over again. When you're somebody who's about progression, when you're somebody who's about evolution, you have no desire to hear someone asking you the same basic questions. That I'm like, you know what? Go pull up a do and don't someplace. Go, go listen to one of these how-tos, do-don'ts, whatever. Go listen to them. But when you come in seeking deeper knowledge, because this individual does offer deeper knowledge on some things, Come for the for the for the for the wisdom that's going to take you to your next level. It's going to bring you higher into self awareness. And as I said before, the wealthy wife. I don't do the level up stuff. I don't. I care less about level up. And I'm being very sincere when I say it because I'm not looking just for you to to make microscopic or tiny steps upwards. We're this energy right now where you need to be catapulting into your next space because you've had all this time to take care of the basics. Now, once again, some folks are coming in new and fresh. That's different. But some folks have been hovering and trying to tread water at the same position for years, but claiming they want more, but you're doing no work to take you higher. How do you want more and you're doing nothing to change? Why? That's your, that's, you're lying to yourself. You have the power. That's what I'm saying. When I see all these titles, all this stuff. You want to become unbothered. That happens, like I said, when you finally let go of everything that you know has no resonance with who you are. Your true self speaks to you all the time. You don't listen. Most people don't listen to her because she's expecting you to change. She's expecting you to develop. She's expecting you to grow and mature. Because those things that you desire, they're waiting for you. And I've said before, you need to understand what it is that you desire. Because I'll say this again. There's a ton of beautiful pictures out there. There are people living lives that look like they're quite lovely. Some of them are. Some of them are not. This is where you have to once again tap in and listen to your truth. What is your spirit saying? What is your higher power saying? 
What work are you doing to allow her to be present and work with you? Are you still tied into the system? Are you still trying to be that good girl? Because here's a kicker. As this world is shifting and changing, I'll say this once more. There is no straddling the fence. People are trying. They're trying so hard to hold it. You want to hold on to your past, but still grabbing for your future, still grabbing higher, but you still got yourself chained to the mundane. You're never going to get higher. You can't because you've got this load wrapped around your ankle that still keeps dragging you backwards. And the only person that can cut you free is you. You must be willing to love you enough to take that chance. Take the risk. You're worth it. Because when it happens, yeah, it's, it, it can feel like an avalanche initially. Because there's so much stuff, like I said, that you've been buried underneath. But that's where the patience comes in. And this is when, once again, you begin to listen to the inner you. This is when you seek out and follow the guidance of those who actually have the capacity to take you higher. That have the capacity to be that safe haven. So when you're unfolding and asking questions that are good questions, meaning you've thought it through, you are actually going to take the information that's shared with you and utilize it. Like I said, don't keep, and I, 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 I love, I love the wealth. I, God, I, I truly, truly do, or goddess, I truly do love my goddaughters. Because once they're in here, I very seldom hear the repetitive questions. Now, they put things into practice. They'll do things, and they'll come back and ask, or we'll come back and work through things. I love this, because I know they're out there doing what I've asked, even if it's uncomfortable initially. Like I said, change is uncomfortable for all of us, even for me. And I trust me. But I, but once again, I make that transition quickly. It's like, okay, obviously I need to take care of this. Obviously I need to do this. Okay, deep breath. Maybe I need to take a quick nap. But let's go. But I love, like I said, when they come and ask the questions because they ask the questions that show me that they did make the attempt. And it may not have come out quite the way they expect. I'm like, that's okay. I don't mind that. As long as I know that you made the attempt, then we can come back and go over what happened. We can make some adjustments because it's always about tweaking. And I'll, I'll say this once more. When they finally, finally get it. Oh, my gosh. When I finally hear someone say, oh, my gosh, I get it. That's what you've been talking about. Yeah. What took me so long? You weren't ready. But obviously... Every baby step you kept taking higher and higher, you've been retaining knowledge. You've been retaining information. You've been cracking away, chipping away at that, those defenses. And you've been allowing the door to open up more and more for you. First, this is like a little slither of light. You kind of peek and trying to see, and you can't see because the slither is too small. And then as they become more confident, they push the door open a little more, like, ooh, a little more light, like, ooh. And then one day they just kick it open, so to speak, like, nah. And I'm like, oh, welcome. And I'm like, yeah, what do I do over here? Well, take a deep breath. <laughs> celebrate yourself because we are about celebrating self over here. We celebrate the incremental steps. And even sometimes they may backslide a bit. I don't care if you backslide a bit. It's only when someone will take, just literally just give up everything they've learned and slide straight back into the abyss. There is no way I can help that. There's no way I can assist somebody because they've just given up everything they've worked so hard to learn. And I'm watching people. There are some people I'm watching that are not so much in the world of wealthy wife, but I'm seeing stuff going on in the world. People that, people are, they're scared. People are legit scared because once again, these transitions are huge. But you need never be afraid when you're moving from the space of being your honest and true self. I'm speaking the truth. Some of you are gonna hear it. Some of you are gonna you're gonna you some of you are gonna be like, yep, mm-hmm, I got it. Some of you are thinking, I don't know, Miss Sophia. I, well, I do know. I do know. Like I said, I got plenty of goddaughters, like I said, made the transitions. I know what happens in my world, in my life, when I stay true to self. So in the master class, we're going to dig once again back into understanding what it means to be feminine, that energy of divine femininity. What does it mean to be that sacred woman? What does it mean to step into that space and own it? Because that's where you become unbothered. 
You're not worried about people saying about you. You're not worried about people's opinions about you. Because I said before, there's only a handful of people in this entire world that know who I am. I mean, they really know me. But these are women that have known me for years. For years. I've got goddaughters, I guess I'm close to, that I've known for years. You know, the process. And, you know, some of them I do know. Some of them, I guess, that we're still getting to know. But there's always going to be aspects, and this goes for you too, there's always going to be things that you're doing behind the scenes that nobody knows about. And as it should be, because there's certain things, especially if you have really, really big dreams, and you are on really have a large mission that you're accomplishing, some things just simply will not come to the surface, come to light, because some things still need to be done in privacy. So once again, there are things I'm working on, things I'm doing, that only a handful of people know about. And I like it like that. So when I finally have all those ducks in a row, it will become public knowledge. But for the time being, there are things I'm working on on a very grand scale that no one's going to know about. Outside of, like I said, the select group of people that I have close to me that I trust. Some of you are going to have that experience too because you are part of a very, very large vision. <clears throat> and some of you, like I said, as you become more prepared and more aware of self, you're finally going to allow yourself to become aware of what your big vision is. You're going to learn how to become unapologetic because that's another huge part of this. You must be unapologetic. Once again, never rude. Never rude. Okay, excuse me. Let me, let me correct that. Seldom are we rude because there are sometimes you do need to re, re, be rude to people because there's some people that are just obnoxious and sometimes they need to be put in their place properly. Had to step away for a second there. Anyway, sometimes, like I said, you have to put people in their place properly. And then once that's done, you walk away and never bother with them again. So I would love for you guys to think of what I'm sharing in this audio today. Because once again, the goal is literally to become unbothered. To stay focused on your personal growth, your personal development, learning how to speak your truth. Not worrying about, oh my God, he's ignoring me. So if he's ignoring you, it means he isn't worth your time and attention anyway. Let him go. Let him go. And that's with anybody, just so you know. You give your energy away when you're unable to discern as to what is or is not, what, what, what should be and has no reason to be important to you. When you are seeking, once again, your validation outside of you, this is where you leak energy. This is where the confusion happens. This is where the, the worry, the concerns, the anxiety, the depression happens. I say it again. Sometimes, and this, this, this is a smaller percentage than you may realize, some of the things are truly chemical imbalances inside people's heads, for sure. Sometimes the things happen, but most of the time when people are sitting around depressed and anxious about something, it's because they're not, there's, no, there's no speaking of their truth. There's no identifying or taking the time out to learn self. Because the more you truly tap into you, the less you're bothered by others. People will say things about you like, oh, that's cute. That's nice. Okay. Not a problem. I've been this way since childhood. I said before, I used to laugh um, because I'm, I'm being very sincere. I, you, you like me, that's wonderful. If you don't, that's not my problem. And no arrogance meant by that, but I'm just like, you know, you don't know me. You don't know me. You have no idea who I am. So, and my thing has always been this. If somebody hears a rumor about me, so to speak, and you are supposedly my friend, you'll come and ask me. You'll ask me. Because if you choose to believe the rumor, then you're not somebody, you're, you're, there's, you're not a friend anyway. There's no way you're a friend. Because if you know me, my heart is good. My heart is pure. I do for people. I care for people sincerely. I do. But once I figure out somebody really just does not, that's not being reciprocated or somebody once again just wants to find a, have an issue, wants an issue with me, okay. Have your issue. It has nothing to do with me. No, no way am I taking things personal. But I will not allow disrespect. I'll be very clear about that. If someone has shown me, after I've shown them that, once again, I am sincere, I do care, I do pour into you, 
and you have decided for yourself that that you have an issue with me, okay, I'm, I'm good with it. I'm good. I have walked away from years-long friendships because of those things, just so you know. Because once again, I'm about reciprocity. I'm not about pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring into people and then coming to find out, like I said, that, that, that they're not sincere. No, we're good. We're good. And you too, when you're on your path to learn thyself, will begin to understand the importance of being able to walk away. And being able to understand that, once again, you're not, there's, there's no way to please everyone. You're just not going to do it. And there's no reason to even try. There's no reason. Some people just love their misery. Some people love whatever it is that's still causing them angst and pain. Some people, it's a comfort zone. And they will. some of them will come out of it in due time. That's wonderful. And some of them may never come out of it. Once again, everyone's on a different, everyone's on a different journey here in this life. When we understand it, and we can honor them in their space, but sometimes you honor that space by just leaving them alone. And it's okay. Become unbothered. Learning how, once again, not to take things personal. Learning how to listen to you. What does your heart say? What is your when you, when you really sit down and you're quiet and you don't have people yammering in your ear, man, 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 but you know, no, I don't know. And you don't know either, so shut up. Seriously, because sometimes people get inside people's heads talking about stuff. They don't know what they're talking about. They're just yammering because they're talking about, they're speaking out of their insecurities. And their worries. And once again, I said before, some people love to keep you miserable because they're unhappy. Never let somebody else kill your joy, okay? Seriously, it's not worth it. Never, never. Because in killing your joy, like I said, you're, you're pouring your energy into somebody who truly is undeserving of you. And I always love when people do those things. Well, it's you know, because I care about you. You know, if you cared about me, you would shut up. You must just literally leave me alone, allow me to process information, allow me to gather information I need to know to find out what, what is going on or what's, you know, what resonates with my spirit. No need for you to be yammering in my ear. These are ways that you become unbothered. And in reference to men, I'll say this again. Women are making themselves crazy for no reason. What is all this desperation? I'm just curious. I mean, I'm really curious. What, why, why, what, no, I don't want to be that curious about it because I'll be honest. I'm not going to put my energy into it. My, my, I know there's no reason to add my energy to that process. No reason to. Because I do know the reason why. I do know the reasons why women do it. And once again, it's, it's, it's conditioning. It's, it's outside conditioning. Because here's the thing about it. When you do know self, I'm going to close with this. When you do take the time out to learn self, take that time out. Be away from all the noise. Take time out to go within, study yourself, learn yourself, and do it with an open mind. When I ask you guys to do these things in reference to self-evaluation, no way are we talking about shaming yourself and being pissed off at yourself. I can't believe I allowed this to happen. It happened, okay? There is a lesson to learn in it. It happened for a reason. And the reason is for you to gain some self-wisdom, take out of it what is beneficial as a stepping stone and building block to take you higher. To elevate your energy, your self-awareness. And then take the rest of it, get rid of it. Just let it go. Let it go. Release that energy to the universe, so to speak. Pray that it was, you know, is released. Convert it back into something very loving and put out there for somebody else to use possibly. Or if you want to cycle it back into you after it's been cleaned out, that's your decision. So, once again, things that happen in our lives that may not have been the best or the greatest, there's wisdom to be gained. Take the wisdom, leave the rest. Or as old folks would say, chew the fat and spit out the bone. Just, I love old folks sayings, okay? <laughs> I do enjoy life. Anyway, but I'm just saying, this is how... You fortify you. This is how you avoid, like I said, just leaky energy. You guys are literally leaking life force energy. I'm not saying any of you directly, but I, like I said, all those titles I read you, that's leaking life force energy. How can you feel empowered to get up out the bed and do great things when you're bleeding energetically? It's like this blah. Where do you think the exhaustion comes from? You guys are giving away your energy. 
Be selfish with your energy. And I mean that in a way that's going to rebuild you. Not saying be obnoxious and mean and narcissist and just awful to people. No. Just understand when to vacate situations, when to make your, take the reevaluations, when to learn and say, you know what, this no longer serves me, I'm out. And stay gone. Trust you. And as I realize this is difficult for some folks because once again, you've been told to do what other people said. You've been told, you know, you've been to be a good girl, do as you're told. Oh my gosh, if you don't do it this way, then you're going to go to hell or you're going to go wherever you're going to go. That still cracks me up. Who who says who? I'm like, really? I don't buy into that one either, just so you know. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Do I say there's, a, you know, are there consequences for poor behavior? Oh, absolutely. Once again, cause and effect. We live in a universe that has universal laws. And one of them is definitely cause and effect. You do something, there is an effect. If it's great, great effect. If it's horrible, horrible effect. We have universal laws in place to take care of situations. So I need not, mm -mm. no, no, I'm good. You will begin to once again exit some of the things that you literally are saying. Because some of you are questioning things. So I'm having them doing this conversation today. Some of you are literally going, ah, this is really just, mm -mm. but you're afraid. There's no reason to be afraid. Really, there isn't. Let go of what, what and who no longer serves your progression back to your personal truth. Now, that is all for today. I adore you. I truly, truly do. I guess I come on here and have these discussions because my desire is for you to truly, truly be happy. I mean, sincerely, I do desire more of you to experience life the way I experience life. I have so many things I'm grateful for. And once again, I'm not, I'm not well, you should know this by now. I, I get the giggles because I'm not so much worried about the outside, trying to figure out who and what I am, so to speak. Is she real? Is she not? Is she this? Is she that? I'm very real. I come to you guys from a space of being authentic. I have nothing else to offer you. If I can't come to you and be authentic, then what are we talking? Why are we here? Why are we here? Do I need all the trappings and different things? I said before, no one knows what really goes on in my world because I share what I choose to share. And certain things will still will, will always remain private with me. Those, I guess again, who I bring into my world will know what's going on. Those who do not need to be inside of my world, well, you don't need to know what's going on. Once again, we all have things we should be working on that we're not being put in front of the public for public scrutiny. Public scrutiny is a hot mess. Look at social media. Because there are plenty of people out there that once again are in their misery and they're going to just they have all kinds of things to say and you're allowing them to take that 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 dark, I'm gonna call it dark, that dirty energy, that 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 just fucked up energy, and they're now you're allowing it to be permeate your energy field. Why would you do this to yourself? So once again, certain things people don't need to know. Once again, move in silence. You want to understand how the rich and wealthy move? They move in silence. If, have you noticed that? Most of them are not showing you what they're doing. You may catch pictures of what paparazzi share to you periodically, but that is like a, like I said, a split second in someone's life. It's not their truth. Not all of it. That you happen to catch a moment, that's all. And some of the moments you catch, mm-mm. So... Learn how to love you. Learn how, once again, to find out what fits you, what works for you. Be honest with yourself. Love yourself. Explore yourself. Rejoice in who you are. And rejoice in the journey, because the journey is, like I said, the journey is going to mess you up at times. But it need not be, a, it's not a permanent thing. It's just simply there to help you understand that you've outgrown certain things. So that's all for today. I adore you and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.